everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello, Nikki Kinzer. How are you on this fine day? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm feeling good. Good. I'm feeling good. Kung Fu is strong. Sun is shining. Mm. Seems like it's been a while. Maybe it's even a metaphorical sun that is shining. That's as right. We all come out of our hobbit holes and begin That's to right. live again. Right. Uh, it is very exciting. Uh, we are continuing our uh, conversation on unique ADHD strategies that work yeah, most of the time. Mm, most of the time. Yeah, most of the time they keep working. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. I'm very excited. This should be the last one, right? I think this is the last set. This is. That yes. Came through. This is yeah. the last set. And uh, then we're moving on to something new. The secret wonders do we have in store? It's a secret. Oh you have to come back and listen. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, so it's going to be great. And uh, before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com to get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website. Subscribe to the mailing list on the homepage and get an email each time the latest episode is released. Of course, you can find the show anywhere finer podcasts are served. Connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And if the show has ever touched you or helped you make a change in your life for the better, head over to patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast and uh, join us. Join the community. Su support the show for a few bucks a month. Uh, you get access to our uh, super secret uh, Discord community channels. Lots of conversation going on there from talks about medication to ADHD support to technology to creativity and music recommendations and books and wellness and of course, that's where we talk about the show. Uh, so lots going on there. Uh, and uh, of, of course, uh, you get to join us for the live stream of the podcast if you want. You can come hang out with us while we record this crazy thing. And um, it, that often comes with its own its own special je ne sais quoi. It's own, <laughs> there's just something, something special usually happens that gets cut out of the final show. So, uh, you know, if you're into that, come hang out with us patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. Do we have any announcements? Not this week. Oh my goodness. I'm sparing people from announcements this week. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, then let's yeah. dig in and talk about uh, strategies that work. Absolutely. Yeah, most of the time. So, well, actually, first of all, a lot of people know what we're talking about. General organization, like of space, yes. things, whatever. Uh, medication management, because we had a couple of uh, great recommendations on how to deal with your medication and maybe yeah. how to remember them, <laughs> remember to take them, and then acceptance as well. So um, general organization, I think we'll probably at some point this spring or maybe this summer, we'll have a whole show on that again, because I yeah. love how people have such creative ideas with organization. Well, and it changes. Like and it changes. New strategies come up. It's it's worth doing Absolutely. this again. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so from Patricia, color coding. In school, each class had their own color ink and highlighter. Now I find ways to color code client files. I have four funding streams with different regulations for clients. Each stream has its own colored sticker on my desk files to help me keep track. That's I awesome. I think color coding is fantastic. How do you use color coding yourself? What do you color code? I color code two major things. I color code my calendar. So mm -hmm. um, if it's a client or anything that has to do with work, it's green. If it has anything to do with my family or home, it's blue. And if it's anything that's personal, like me going out to lunch with a friend or something like that, it's red. So that's one area that I do. Okay. Um, and then the second I do is my priorities. And so I have uh, on my things list, I will color code priorities. So if it's important that has to be done pretty quickly, it's red. Um, mm -hmm. Anything that needs to be done maybe this week, but not today is green. And then anything that doesn't have to be done this week, I don't have on my today list, but I would have it color code as blue because it's not mm -hmm. something I have to worry about right now. So I, I love yeah. color codes. It works. 
Yeah, me too. I look at my calendar and it's full of just purple and red and yellow and blue and green and I've got colors for everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's all automated. So I don't mm-hmm. I don't do any manual like in my calendar if it's a if it's a type of appointment or on a certain calendar, it's just automatically that color. Um I also color code files to to uh, indicate status. So like if I'm mm-hmm. producing a podcast, there's a folder for the Logic Studio Pro um uh, f- files that go with it, and I'll color code that green, which means it's in progress, it's in motion. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm finished with it, it's gray. And I have some scripts running on my computer, so when I color code something gray, it automatically takes that whole file, which is sometimes very, very large, co- and copies it to my cold storage drive in on, in the right place based on the file naming, and then removes the tag from it, so it gets archived and and put away. Um, and I have uh, red, which it which means this needs to be produced, but it doesn't have all the assets in place. Somebody better send me their audio file, that kind of thing. So I mm-hmm. definitely I use tags and color codes in the in the file system all over the place. It's hugely yeah. helpful. It's the same thing. Just anything that allows you to get a quick glance. Right. At information, right? Mm-hmm. And make an assessment. Mm-hmm. I think that's, and it means that's something incredibly to you. useful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Without having to open and flip through and yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we have Eleonora in Discord says spatial intent. Oh, I like this one. Mm-hmm. If I have a space in my house, it has a purpose. The office is a distraction-free zone with nothing but work equipment and a printer. The living room is nothing but media consumption stuff. I have an area for practicing my instruments, etc. What did we used to say when we were in the organizing podcast world? Um, For every place there is a purpose. That's right. For every place there is a purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So that you can find what you need when you need it. Oh, gosh, you have good memory. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. But yeah, that's yeah. exactly what she's practicing. It's great. I, 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 I fall down a little bit on that because I like to have like, I can't just have work stuff. I've tried that. I have to have, I have to be surrounded by things that make me smile and laugh because, yeah. you know, anxiety gets me down, stress gets me down. And I need something that gives me that, the little jolt of joy sometimes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need it. Um, and so I, my work, my spaces tend to commingle. Like I have toys and stuff. I have all the like mm-hmm. little fun gadgets and trinkets to decorate around me, and I can pull those off the wall and and uh, just fidget with them as I need them. I have my handy, um, you know, you can't go too far without your shock tato, um, <laughs> the potato what that shocks you. Shock tato. I've never seen that before. What is that? You've never seen the shock tato, no. Nikki? Have I not told you about the shock tato? Is it like a hot? Potato? It is a hot potato, and you. Can, I'm showing this in the live stream. It is a brown, looks like a clump of dirt that's about I don't know two fists in size, and it it's covered in metal plates. Now the metal plates are electrified, and so if I turn this on, first of all, it'll play the music to Psycho, the movie, oh, geez. the theme song <laughs> to Psycho, and then when the music stops, you have to. It's, you, it's like hot potato. You got to be throwing it to somebody else because whoever catches it, they get the crap shocked out of them. And uh, it's it's a wholly diabolical game. It has three settings, uh, normal, lame, and extreme. And uh, it, it hurts a lot. But I get so, such a smile out of this. For some reason, this stupid thing that it exists makes me laugh all the time. Okay, and so, so I just, like- it's actually in reach. I just keep it just around. Are you are you throwing it at yourself? Like I can see you doing this like juggling move. Like it's in your left hand, and then you throw it in the air, and you catch it on your right hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you could, but I often I often chuck myself, and I I used to make this. I would demonstrate it, but right. I, because I used to make this mistake of holding it like in my fingers so I'm not touching the plate and then putting the speaker up to the microphone so you can hear the sound and then but I made the mistake of not recognizing that my finger was on a plate once and I did it live on a podcast and just destroyed myself and it shoots electricity up your wrist and (laughs) it just it really hurts I, it's a gag gift, you know? I it's mean, a it's a dangerous okay. kind of made in unregulated China, you know, manufacturing house. And it somehow got across the border. And I think it's and hysterical. You love it. Yeah, I love it. It's weird. It's a weird thing, but it's it is my shock tato. So there you anyhow, go. <laughs> uh, so I, I feel like back to the the purpose of this is I need things in reach that make me smile like that. And right. so uh, it, it is it, I count it as a fidget. You know, it's just mm-hmm. another thing to to, you know, keep the keep the noise level just high enough so I can uh, so I can Focus. get to work. That's right. Yeah. 
All right. Lynn from Facebook says, when I need to remember to take something out to the car, grocery bags, library books, etc., I put it on the floor immediately in front of the door where I would literally trip over it. Love that idea. And I have to say something that my husband and I do, which is really kind of funny because we've done it for years um, since we've lived together, is one of us, if one of us is thinking about something that we have to do, we'll put something in the middle of the floor. So you can't like step over it. You would actually, you know, fall into it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And whenever that happens, we know it's because one of us have thought about something that we don't want to forget. So so every once in a while, there'll be like some random, you know, um, I don't know, shirt or something in the middle of the hallway. <laughs> and it's because the my other husband, of you doesn't necessarily yeah. know what it's supposed to be. No, but we both know that it means that somebody's thinking about something that has to be remembered in the morning. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So. That's fantastic. Um, somebody named Pete from this podcast. Oh, I wonder who that is said, I have to <laughs> shout out again to Command Strips. Did some more organizing this week, and I'm constantly blown away at how handy these things are. From tools to equipment, I can keep things organized with reduced friction and maintain line of sight to everything so that I can find out find what I need when I need it. That's how I remembered, because I just wrote it. You just um, wrote that, yeah. So, yeah. So, this week, I have a piece of electronic equipment, and it is usually sits on top of my desk. It's an audio box that manages this microphone, but when it sits on top of my speaker that's on my monitor speaker on my desk, it creates audio interference, so there's a constant buzz in my headphones, and I was trying to figure out how can I do this, and I realized I can command strip it under my desk. I'm on a stand-up desk, so I command strip this box under to the front side of my desk. And now I can reach the volume and the all the stuff that I need, the gain and all the knobs that I need right here on my desk. And it's so secure. Then I went crazy again. Oh, and no. I started command stripping tools. Oh, geez. Uh, so I have this handy screwdriver that I love. And it was made <laughs> of this rubber that doesn't, the command strip doesn't stick to. But if you cover the, the screwdriver in gaffer's tape, I can then put a command strip of on it. Of course sticks you can. Perfectly. <laughs> and now I have this screwdriver in the, my wall is covered now. And in fact, there's so much stuff on the walls of my closet next to me here that it's now, you, you know how there's the, 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 it's a sliding door and there's like right. a rail and then a, about a foot and a half of, of wall on the yeah, inside right. edge of the closet. I now have lined the inside edge of the closet on the ceiling with gear and stuff that kind of hangs down a little bit. So at a glance, I can look up and see everything that I want in there. And my closet is staying miraculously clean because I'm sticking stuff to walls. Don't underestimate how incredible it is to stick stuff to walls. I'm with not Command because it it's really amazing. is a good idea because then you don't even have to think about, you know, where where its home is because really, you know, it's on the wall. So yeah. if it's not in the exact place that it was, that's OK, because you're still going to see it on the wall. It's on the wall. That's a great it idea. It is fantastic. I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah. And even for <laughs> for stuff like temporary storage, I, I know it's a little bit wasteful, but I keep these in my briefcase, in my backpack. And so when I go to places, I stick a command strip on the wall if I want to, like, put my iPhone charger on the wall, all and my chargers. Because, you know, I have the new iPhone, the iPhone puck, right? The magnetic puck. So I stick that. That's a command strip right by my bed. And so I can magnetize my phone and it charges magnet mag magnetically stuck to the wall. It's amazing. Uh, you so, are <laughs> Everywhere in your house, you're gonna have like something stuck on the wall. That's 100%. hilarious. A hundred percent. I I really need to try to get my kids stuck on the wall with command strips. Oh they're incredible. Gosh. So I this That's under hilarious. the desk area is what I'm really excited about today uh, mm -hmm. because it's just so useful and uh, it's not something that I had I just forgotten to consider. I guess oh. is more under the desk space. Okay. Wow. That's all what right. I got. You're going to have stuff on about... the ceiling, too. Like, oh, yeah. You're going to go all over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I've got lights. I've got, oh, the works. The oh, works. Geez. It's amazing. All right. Uh, let's talk about medication. Yes, medication management. So, Rachel from Discord, one of the things I do is with my med management, I take more than a few pills, my ADHD one included. I have one of those week-long pill dividers. When I fill it, if one of my pills doesn't fill each box, or it does, but it only has a few left in the bottle, I leave the pill bottle out so it reminds me to order more. If I forgot 
not to do this or underestimated how many pills I have left, I do the same thing, but turn my pill bottle upside down brilliant, to show yes. that I'm out. I don't throw away the empty bottle until I get the new one in, which is great too, because then you mm-hmm. know if, you know, whether you've ordered it or not or whatever. Yeah. But I love that. That's great. Yeah, totally. Um, And let's see, we also have this bit from Laura on Facebook who says, to, who says, to take my meds on time, I started using MediSafe. It's an app It has a paid version, but I use the free one. You can schedule your meds and it has notifications. Multiple notifications for each dose, pretty much until you mark it as taken. And there's an option to add a critical alert if you are X time late to take your meds. Extra useful for when I decide to ignore the notifications. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've had a client who used this before too. And and this may be the paid version, but I remember um, you can share it with people. So if... uh, if you share it with like a partner or a friend or your ADHD coach, for example, yeah, right. uh, they, they can look and they can notify you too, or they can help you remember. I, I don't remember exactly how it worked, but there is a feature there there yeah. um, in that app that you can share it with others. That's yeah. very cool. I actually, I build all my meds into, into my to-do app. Do you? Um, and so I have like, I, you know, I'm still on, can you believe I'm, it's been... God, nine months, almost 10 months since I dealt with this whole ridiculous COVID thing. And I'm still on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven meds three times a day. And, oh, geez. Um, and so I, I actually have uh, morning meds task with subtasks for each, each medication and dosage, mm-hmm. right? And then midday meds with each medication and dosage and evening meds. So I have to go in and check them off as I, as I take them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that is useful enough for me because I can set that particular project to send me all kinds of notifications. If I miss right. them, if I'm ignoring them, I'll get texts, I'll get emails, I'll get all kinds of things. So um, that's been really useful for me. And it was this was the first time because I uh, that I've I've really needed any sort of accommodation around medications because there are just so many um, mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. that. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, it's been it's been a a useful accommodation. Absolutely. So. Okay. Our last one is around acceptance. And, and I love this. I love that this is our last uh, strategy, recommendation, inspirational type of thing, right? Because um, this is what it's all about. So this person says, remember that you will have bad days, days when the meds don't seem to work or your usual strategies fail you. Recognize these days when they come and accept them. Forgive yourself and move on. If you know it's a low function day, there isn't always something you can do about it. Don't beat yourself up because that will achieve nothing. Accept it and plan for a better tomorrow. Oh, that's lovely. Love it. I love it because it's so true, right? I mean, that's why we even say these strategies work most of the time. (laughs) Yeah, most (laughs) of the time. Because they're not always going to work. And if you get a bad night's sleep, your ADHD may be a little bit louder. If you, you know, didn't get your exercise in, it may be a little bit louder. Transitions can be hard. There's so many different things that can come in to play. How do you coach yourself through the acceptance stuff when you're when you're feeling low? Because I, that's the the point where you really need to to remind yourself that these aren't supposed to. These we know these aren't going to work all the time. And in when I'm clear headed, right when I'm at my very best, I know that um, you know I, I it, just because it failed today doesn't mean it'll fail tomorrow. But when I'm not clear headed, when I'm overwhelmed, when I'm stressed, when I'm anxious, when I'm having a particular ADHD day, that one failure is magnified to all failures heretofore throughout the universe uh, forever and ever. Amen. Yes. I mean, I think that that's that's true for sure. Um, But this is what I've witnessed in the last uh, several years of coaching and and with group coaching, too. And even just last week, I heard this in the GPS group. I think that the more you practice the acceptance, the more forgiving you are of yourself, the more you pay attention to that, those internal, uh, uh, things that you're saying to yourself, which you know aren't true. Um, it, it does 
start to happen. I've witnessed it. I've witnessed people say, I don't beat myself up so much about this anymore. It's not to say that they won't ever or that, you know, ADHD is going to have a bad day, but I've, I've seen it, Pete. And, and it's a beautiful thing to witness because to me, mm-hmm. that is more important than any strategy in the world. If you can see that, okay, this, this is an ADHD thing. It got in the way. It's okay. I can recover from this. And, and even if you can just make the recovery, uh, you know, a few hours shorter than it was, that's a success. If you can come out at the end of the day, at the end of the moment and say, I'm not going to beat myself up over this, then you are getting closer and closer to some kind of acceptance. I don't know if we ever 100% accept that we have anxiety or 100% accept that we have uh, ADHD I mean, this stuff sucks, right? I mean, I look at my husband and with MS, like we haven't accepted that he has this debilitating disease. We don't Mm -hmm. want to accept these things, but but they are what are given to us. And um, I just, yeah, it's that listening to that internal conversation and and, uh, recovering just a little bit quicker. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not your fault. And that's what you have to keep remembering. Yeah, it's not my fault. You know, Um, we've talked about guilt and shame. You can feel guilty because, yeah, I made a mistake or I was late again. I'm sorry. I I, I will pay attention to I will pay attention more to that. But when you get to that shame Mm -hmm. of I'm a bad person because this happened, then, yeah, that's what we have to keep fighting with and challenging. Right. Well, this is good stuff. Uh, and it's been a great, I feel like it's been six weeks now. We've been talking about uh, all these fantastic user, listener, yes. community submissions. This has I been love it. an epic series. And uh, I just have to say, thank you so much, everyone, for writing in, for joining us on the show, for recording your interviews with Nikki. I mean, they're mm-hmm. just so incredibly valuable to have... Yes your experiences documented this way and, and we'll do it again because yeah. we got such great f- feedback from listeners and already have people saying i'll be on it next time yeah <laughs> so yeah. it's fabulous thank yeah, you so much it's really fabulous thank you everybody for downloading and listening to this show we so appreciate your time and your attention don't forget if you have something else you'd like to contribute keep the train on the tracks keep it rolling we're heading over to the show talk channel in the discord server you can join us right there by becoming a supporter Supporting member at the deluxe level. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. <laughs>